All right, so Tony Sunshine, you know, I just want to start out in the beginning of your career. Right. You know, take me back to when you first originally met Big Pun. Just give me the story about how you guys met um, and how you, he kind of brought you into the Terror Squad and all that. Well, I wouldn't say he brought me into the Terror Squad, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Because Terror Squad was always uh, um, like a neighborhood family, you know what I'm saying? Some, some, some... Some of us were older than others, you know what I'm saying? I was I was sort of like the baby in the crew. Yeah. You know, and um somewhere along the line, you know, Pun came along. He started hanging out in the neighborhood, you know, he came from a few blocks away, him and Cuban. And um, you know, I was always singing. Like everybody in the neighborhood always knew me for singing and, and they would always come up to me and you know, ask me to sing some. So yeah. everybody already knew me in the neighborhood for singing. They used to call me R&B. Yeah, okay. You know, and um, Pun used to play basketball and all that in the basketball courts, and, and he'd be around, and nobody really knew that he rapped. Nobody really knew that he spit, you know? And um, I was already hanging out with Joe. You know, Joe used to take me with him to Relativity when Relativity was okay. around. And, he used to take me with him to video music box and I would go along to little um um like outdoor events with him and things things like that. But I was young, you know, I was at a young age and my mother was really strict, so I wasn't really allowed to do too many things. Mm -hmm. Like I had curfew and I had to be home at a certain time. Yeah. You know, I'm talking about I was like twelve, thirteen. You know, as years went along, you know, um, in the neighborhood, you know, Pun, Cuban, there was another uh, another dude that, you know, was affiliated with the terror squad named Toon, Triple Sace, and, uh, yeah, that's about it. Yeah. They had a crew called Full Eclipse. Yep. You know, Joe was doing his own thing. He was working on his second album. Um, Little Hack and Flex brought, brought Pun to the attention of Joe. You know, and we do an interview about him. Pardon me for a minute. Sorry. Pun was brought to the attention of Joe. You know, it took Joe some time to really take interest in 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 what Pun was doing. You know, but Pun was hot. Pun was hot. It was an, it, it was undeniable the skills that Pun had, and nobody really knew that he had that till he pulled the rabbit, you know, out the hat. Mm -hmm. And um, Pun jumped on Joe's album. Things got hot for him, you know. Sort of he he sort of blew up overnight. He got his deal. He blew up overnight, you know. And Pun always Pun always promised, you know, some of us in the hood that if he blew up, he would come back and put us on. You know, so he kept his word. You know, as time went by, he blew up. He did his thing on his first album, and he came to the hood looking for me. Okay. You know, he came to the hood looking for me, told me to come with him on tour. I went on tour. You know, I became his hype man. You know, I went all over the world with him, and, and we started a, 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 a production company ourselves called LGP Latin's Going Platinum slash Foundation. But during the process of that, Pun passed away. Mm -hmm. You know, so Joe sort of like, you know, took over the, 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 the situation as far as me and Remy went. You know, he took us under the wing, got us some deals. Yep. And that's pretty much it from there. Well, you know, as someone who's always, you know, followed your music since the beginning, you know, since I first heard you on the first Terror Squad album, you know, I kind of looked at your career as different, you know, different periods, different eras. And I could be off in some of these eras, but you could correct me. And, you know, the first one I classify it as, you know, the first Terror Squad album into Pun's Yeah Baby album and then Cuban Link's 24K album. That was around like 98, 99, 2000. We'll say, yeah. we'll say the first Terror Squad album. Yeah. You know, I wasn't, I wasn't, I wasn't really signed to Terror Squad yet. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean... When 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 we talk about Terror Squad, like I said, we're talking about a neighborhood family, you know what I'm saying? A group of guys that grew up together, you know, it was a football team, a, a graffiti crew, it was a breakdancing crew, you know. It, throughout the years, it was a, a numerous amount of different things till it evolved into the music, yep. 
you know. And um, so I pretty much always been a part of Terror Squad. I'm a product of that. But, you know, as far as being signed to the production company, you know, that came years later. Now, we did the first Terror Squad album. I wasn't really on the cover of the, yeah. uh, uh, of the album, nor was I really a part of any other, other records, but they allowed me to do a track on an album called My Kind of Girls, which was really, you know, provocative and sort of hardcore, which wasn't really what I wanted to do, but at the present time, I was open to do whatever I had to do to get myself heard and, 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 and get people to notice my talent. So I did the record called My Kind of Girls, and you know, I was happy being a part of the album, but it really wasn't what I wanted to do. You yeah. know what I'm saying? It was. It wasn't who Tony was. It wasn't my 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 preference of my choice of music. You know what I'm saying? Like I love what I do, and so for a long time, that's what people knew me as, the hardcore R&B singer. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Which I'm I'm I I, I grew up you know in the, in the hood and. I'm from the hood, and you know what I'm saying? I got a certain way I walk and talk, and you know, certain way I was raised. But at the end of the day, I'm an R&B singer, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? I'm a lover, not a fighter. Yeah. You know, so now that I'm making the music I want to make, it's, 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 it's sort of been hard, you know what I mean? Because it's new to people's ears. Like when I did the She's Like the Wind record, got a lot of love, I got a lot of good feedback, but I also got a lot of negative feedback because that's not what the streets wanted me to do. Hmm. That's not what the streets were expecting from Tony. They, yeah. was, they was expecting more of a shoot 'em up bang bang slash Nate Dogg situation. You know, and I was pretty happy with, with, with the She's Like The Wind record cause I felt like I actually got a chance to let people hear my full potential, my talent. Yeah. You know, like the kid can really sing. He's not just the the, the, the kid that sings hooks. He's not the guy that sings on the on, on the terror squad joints. Just does the hooks. Mm -hmm. So it's been pretty hard. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's been pretty hard breaking those barriers and and, and, and making the transition into who I want to be, who I really am. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. so, Do you think that's something that's kind of you know, I always read certain things that maybe some labels kind of didn't know what to do with you or where, what type of music to, to have come out from you. Was that ever, do you think that's hindered you over your career? I think that, I think that the whole Terror Squad thing, you know what I'm saying? Like I said, just, just being the only R&B singer within a hardcore rap group, you know what I'm saying? And not really being able to do what I wanted to do and how I wanted to do it and how I wanted to be heard, you know, because pretty much I was always directed what to do, you know, not signed to none of that, but you know, pretty much I was always given the idea of what they wanted me to do, you know what I'm saying? So I never really got the chance to, to, to map it out, you know, to draw the picture I wanted to do, yeah. draw, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, you know, that's another thing I, I wondered, you know, what type of music do you prefer perform? Because I've heard you do R&B, I've heard you do reggaeton, I've heard you do street, you know, R&B, I've heard you rapping. Well, you know, I'm flexible, man. I'm, I'm flexible. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not one-sided. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm, I'm not afraid to think out the box and I'm not afraid to experiment with different type of music. And, you know, I'm a music lover. I listen to all kinds of music, opera, classic, you know, it, it's, it's just not... There's no limit to what I can do when it comes to music. Yeah. You know, so I would say that, you know, I'm not, I'm not, um, I'm not too fond of making hardcore records anymore. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's not, that's not really who I am. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, like I said, yeah, I come from the streets and... Yeah, I've had my share of troubles coming up and, 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 you know, every now and then I get myself into to a little trouble, you know what I'm saying? Everybody does. But like I said, I'm, I'm, I'm an R&B singer, you know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? I like, I like to sing 
soulful music. I like to sing songs that people can appreciate. I want to make timeless music. Yeah. I want to make a classic album, you know. So for those people who are expecting to shoot them up bang bang R&B record, that's not what I'm bringing to the table. You know? Okay. I'm 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 finally going to be able to bring Tony to the table. Yeah. You know what I mean? Not 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 Tony Sunshine from the Terror Squad, just mm -hmm. Tony. Yeah. You know, so for those people who are expecting to shoot a more bang bang record, that's not what I'm bringing to the yeah. table. You know, we might have, we might have, you know, a little some some on the album for those people who need some to 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 jam to while they driving and some like that. But I want to make heartfelt music. Yeah. I want to show people that I really can sing and I'm really a musician. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm not a made up artist. You know, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, you know, a dude that goes in the studio and uses all kind of mechanical, you know, things on my vocals. Mm -hmm. I really can't sing in that. You know, that's what I want to show the world. Yeah, no, that's know? fair. But being signed to these labels, you know, I wouldn't say that they didn't know what to do with me. I just would say that poli a lot of politics got in the way, a lot of egos, Yeah. you know. Like a lot of you know, a lot of people would just wanted to throw their weight around and show who the boss was. And, yeah. You know, when you dealing when you dealing with other people's money, nobody wants to deal with a headache. Nobody wants to feel like they're investing in something and they're not gonna get back what they feel they deserve in return. And I gotta respect that. Yeah. You know, I've had a numerous amount of deals. We talking about almost nine major record deals. You know, I've been signed to every company there is. You know, so if I wasn't talented and, and 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 I wasn't here to make music, I mean, I've been blessed. God has blessed me. Mm -hmm. God has definitely blessed me, and I'm definitely grateful. And you know, the situations keep 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 coming. Yeah. You know, and I guess that's 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 just a blessing from God when you when you're a good person and you good people and you keep it real with those around you and you just good people all around. Mm -hmm. God blesses you, you know, so I've been fortunate enough to lose a deal here and gain another one, you know, two to three weeks later. Yeah. You know, I lose a deal over here due to politics, due to bad company and, and, and ego trips and I'll get another deal two or three months later. So that's just, it's sort of been like a pattern. Like every time my album gets ready to come out or is, is, is in the midst of being mixed and mastered, you know, I'll get a phone call from, from a label rep or, you know, even the CEO, I'll get a phone call, you know, to come in and have a meeting and they'll break down to me what the problem is and the issue and why they don't want to deal with it. And, you know, yeah. Tony, we love you. We know you're a talented individual. We know what you're going to bring to the table. You know, we know what you can do to the game, but is there any way possible that you know, we can move forward without your company being involved. And you know, I was always a loyal individual. I was always a loyal cat, you know what I mean? So what I would do is just, I appreciate you guys. Thank you for everything, but I'm moving along with my, with, with, with my, with my family, mm -hmm. you know? And that sort of became a pattern. So one day I just felt like I couldn't take it no more, you know? I pretty much gave it my all. I stood loyal for a pretty, pretty, pretty long time. You know what I'm saying? Till I finally couldn't take it no more. Yeah. You know what I mean? So here I am today, finally on my own, and finally being able to, to, to again, do what Tony wants to do. Okay. So I hope the fans are ready for what I'm bringing to the table, and I hope they're happy with it. Yeah. Because I'm giving them my all. Cool. Before I talk, you know more about your current situation. Right. Just want to get a little more history from you. Take me back to, to 2002. You know, Pun had passed. T O N Y came out. You know, you were on Fat Joe's album on Four Tracks Loyalty album. That you had Grey Goose come out. That was on the radio too. Take me back to that era. You know what was going on with you then? I mean, I was living, man. You know, yeah. I, I had I, I I had a crazy buzz. You know. All kinds of great producers and companies were looking for me. And um, I was getting money. I was living well. You know, I was definitely appreciative. And the pattern kicked in. Yeah. 
mm-hmm. you know, the pattern kicked in. I mean, Grey Goose was a great record for me. You yeah. know, that that was that, you know, that's that was a good record for me because it gave me a chance to sing, but also it was also like a crossover street record. Yeah. You know? You could play it in the clubs, the girls liked it, the dudes loved it. You know what I'm saying? But at the same time, I had fun with it because I actually sang on that record. Mm-hmm. You know, I sang on T.O.N.Y. too, though. But T.O.N.Y. was a street record. It was a, you know, shoot em up, bang, bang joint. So, not to say that I didn't enjoy that, neither. I'm just saying that that's not really what I wanted to do. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's kind of rough. <clears throat> Being in a lane, you know, where you classified the Latino hardcore R&B singer, you know what I'm saying? And, yeah. and, and you don't want to be looked at that way. You just want to be looked at as an R&B singer, as a musician. Mm-hmm. You know, Pun said, Pun told me, you know, I not told me, I heard Pun in the interview. Well, not, I was actually sitting next to him when he was doing the interview. And the interviewer asked him, yo, uh, Pun, how do you feel being the Latino rapper? You know, the, the and Pun was like, Latino rapper? What do you mean? I'm not a Latino, I'm a rapper. When you go to the, to, to the record store to buy Biggie's album, you don't say, let me get the Jamaican rapper's album. When you go buy Usher's album, you don't say, let me get the African R&B singer's album. Mm-hmm. You go and buy Usher's album, Big's album. Yeah. And that's how he wanted to be looked at, and that's how I want to be looked at. You know, so at the time, it, it was kind of hard for me, you know, just just being stuck in limbo. You know what I'm saying? The record company don't know what to do. You're, you, you're surrounded by bad company. You know what I mean? You're forced to play the shadow all the time. And then here you got Usher and you got Justin Timberlake and you got... All these great artists, they're all great artists, but they all doing what you want to do and how you want to do it. You yeah. know what I'm saying? And you know that that's what you can do. You know you know that you can go toe-to-toe with these dudes, but you're not able to because, you know, that's the, the, the label's telling you that's not what they want from you. Your company's telling you that's not what they want from you. Mm-hmm. So what do you do? You do what you have to do in order to get in through the door and hope that you know, you can get enough recognition to finally say, all right, enough is enough. Yeah. This is what I'm going to do now. Yeah. You know, so okay. it's been rough. Well, then, you know, after Grey Goose, the next couple of years, you had Oh My God, which was a big single for you. And um, Oh My God, I loved Oh My God as yeah, well. Yeah. Oh My God was, was, was a great record for me, you know, because I actually got to sing on that as well. Mm-hmm. You know, um... Puff was involved on the record. Puff loved the record. Puff was pushing to shoot the video. And, and you know, Puff, Puff is too busy for anybody. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So for Puff to even be on the record and then really be pushing to say, yo, this is a great record. You know, I'll even be involved in the video was, was big for me. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and, and it was just taking so long, man. It was just so much bullshit excuse my language it was just so much bullshit involved and so many excuses and you know so much emotions running through through my body and just my mind just was going crazy because I couldn't understand it we have a great record heavy rotation the people love it let's just shoot the video you know what I'm saying or let's just run with it it's either now or never and that pretty much happened with every record I put out Mm-hmm. You know, from T.O.N.Y. to Grey Goose to Oh My God to, you know, we had a great record, but no video and no follow-up. Yeah. Like, what are we doing? You know what I'm saying? So, pretty much every label I signed to, I made sure that I gave them great music, even though it's not, even though my heart wasn't fully into it, but I made sure that I gave it my all anyway. Yeah. To make sure that they were happy. You know, and I made it my business to go in the studio and work and make sure that work was done. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. and any label that you would go to and speak about tone, they'll tell you, yo, the kid is awesome. You know, he yeah. works. It's not like he's a lazy kid and we, you know, 
I work, mm -hmm. you know, but I don't know. Never shot the video, never had a follow-up. Yeah. How about another song I heard around that time was the song you have with R. Kelly, Everywhere I Go. Was that from that same period? Everywhere I Go. Yeah, that was um, Jive, when I was signed to Jive. Was that a song you would say you liked, you know, the style you liked? Um, pretty much, Kells is one of my idols, you know, he, I think that he's such an incredible artist, you know, he's one of the greats, regardless of what his personal life is like, or, you know, I supported him 100% when everyone was kicking him down, I love R. Kelly, I got all his albums, I study him, you know, and again, I was excited to know that we were going to Chicago to meet with him and I was going to get to sit down with one of my idols and get a record from him. And um, it didn't happen that way. Like, we went to Chicago, we went to Shy Town, we went to the Chocolate Factory, and you know, Kells is a busy dude. He writes for a lot of people and you know, he got his own career, he got his own thing. So you know, he was pretty much busy and he wasn't able to 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 come down and meet with us and so we spent two days in Chicago waiting on him and never got to really sit with him at that at that time you know I never really got to sit with him and, and pick a record myself or pretty much give him an idea of what I wanted to do you know what kind of song I wanted and again I didn't pick the record okay I didn't pick the record but you know I heard through the grapevine that Kells had said that this was it. This was a magical record. Yeah. You know, this is what people want to hear right now. This is hot, you know. So I went ahead and recorded the joint. You know what I'm saying? I went ahead and recorded the joint. And um, it was leaked out. It never really got put out. Yeah. It was leaked out. It's not even mixed. You know, it's not mixed or mastered. It's just somebody leaked it out. And you know, a lot of people ask for the record. They think is 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 a great record, you know. And so I think the whole idea of being able to record a record that R. Kelly wrote is highly appreciated, you know. And I, I'm I'm grateful. I thank God for that, you know. That I I got I got to record a record that a musical genius wrote, you know. I got a record from Cal's. Yeah. How many, how many, how many individuals can say that? Yeah. Now, was I happy with the record? I can't say that. Okay. You know, I'm grateful. I'm grateful and I'm honored, but I wasn't happy with the record. Yeah. Okay. Because I wanted one of them baby making love joints. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I wanted to sing. I wanted to, you know, shit. Yeah. Kells is going to write me a record and I'm going to smash it. This is it. Hmm. And it wasn't it. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. then and then I recorded the record and about three weeks later I'm watching BET and I hear these young kids, I forget their name. And Kells had wrote them a record. And the record was like so similar, just the the wordplay and the, yeah. the, the, the melody and the surrounded by pretty it was just like crazy to me, like holy shit. You know what I mean? So not only was it a record that I didn't want to record, but it was a record that was so similar to some that he had gave somebody else. Yeah. You know, so again, I was honored and grateful, and I thank God for that, you know. Again, how many people can say they recorded a Kells record? But it was like, you know, wow. That's crazy. You know, so. Okay. And then and a couple years later, you had She's Like the Wind, Lumi D. And then, you know, I heard a couple other I was, songs. I was, I was, I was, um, ecstatic with She's Like the Wind. Yeah. You know, that, that, that was a record I was extremely happy with. You know, when the idea was presented to me by, by Lumi D and her management, and, you know, I was ecstatic. I was extremely happy with the record because, again, I was able to perform on yeah. that record. I was able to sing. I was able to show my talent. And a lot of things were edited from that record.